What's up, booktube? So if you saw my last video, um, you know that I am doing double features on the subscription boxes that I received because as of April, I was MIA. Uh, but we're back on the horse and we're going to open some subscription boxes. Like always, I am not paid to do this. I buy these myself because I love them and I want to spread the word and I love the books and the knowledge of wonderful books that they provide me. Nocturnal Readers Box is so good at book picking and you get so much value in this subscription box. So I have to share it. And because I missed a month, I'm not gonna skip that. I'm just gonna do two. So you get April and May. And of course I had to peek because it's not like I could hold on to these boxes for this long without actually seeing what's inside of them. And ooh, let me tell you, I'm a big fan of May. Let's do April 1st, which was wonderful as always, but um, May had some really good tidings in it. And I only took a little peek. I'm very excited to reopen it today and really get to look at everything. April Nocturnal Reader's Box. Ooh. It's been a while since I've looked at this. First we have a hat. Long days and pleasant nights. Not really a hat kind of girl. It's not like a Stephen King thing. It's got a rose. For our wearable this month, we went with a dad hat in the form of Dark Tower inspired quote by Stephen King. I don't know about you, but I wear my NRV hats daily, so adding another to the mix had to happen. So it is Stephen King, Twin Towers. I just took a peek at this. I just bought a book that it says is on here. I gotta look and peek and see. Did I buy a book that is in here? Oh my god. I just bought this book. Man. See, that's what I get for not opening this on time. I bought a book that's in here. Dang it. Be me a little. Okay, we also created a koozie that can keep you cool. The design is based on let the right one in. This item was not the original that we had planned. So it's inspired by let the right one in. Not a koozie person. Maybe if I drink beer or something. Ooh, this is heavy. Oh, I remember reading about this. It's big, heavy coin here. Inspired by American Gods, it says, For fans of Matt Sweeney, re recreated the coin from Neil Gaiman's American Gods. May it bring you luck or something. It's pretty heavy, dude. All right. Ooh. Next we have the bookmark. Very cool. NRV April. it's that um that weird playground thing and it's she's holding it in the snow it looks like there's a little boy sitting on the metal playground thing like in the movie i don't remember if that was the original movie or the remake because i've seen both of them and it's been a while but we got a bookmark the art is different who goes there so that's a little different than anything we've had before inspired by John Campbell's who goes there Ooh, the pin is extra grueling based on the Ryzen by Brian Keane very zombie-ish Never heard of this one either. We'll have to look it up. The books, the first one says Apex Magazine, fiction by Andrew. Oh, uh, four different people, so. I'm not seeing that it was mentioned on the card. So it looks like a little book of short stories. Maybe a couple shorts. Interesting. In, um, it is in a, a magazine format though. Kind of looks like articles as opposed to stories. Some pictures. Interesting. 
The next one is the one I just bought, Slade House by David Mitchell. The back says, I've stopped because the far end of the garden, the wall with the small black door, is gone all faint and dim. Not because of evening, it can't even be four o'clock yet. Not because it's misty either, I look up, the sky's still bluish like it was before. It's the garden itself, the garden's fading away. Interesting. It says, turn down Slade Alley, narrow, dank, and easy to miss even when you're looking for it. Find the small black iron door set into the right-hand wall. No handle, no keyhole, but at your touch it swings open. Either the sunlit garden of an old house that doesn't quite make sense, too grand for the shabby neighborhood, too large for the space it occupies. A stranger greets you by name and invites you inside. At first, you don't want to leave. Later, you find that you can't. This unnerving, taut, and intricately woven tale by one of our most original and bewitching writers began in 1979 and reaches its turbulent conclusions around Halloween 2015 because every nine years on the last Saturday of October a guest is summoned to Slade House but why has that person been chosen by whom and for what purpose the answer lies waiting in the long attic at the top of the stairs Ooh, that looks cool I bought this book two days ago on Saturday. So now I have two copies. That's what I get for not doing my videos on time. And this is like the world's way of saying, Bambi, get on your game because you're doubling up here for absolutely no reason. I did not need to buy this book when I already had it at home. Dang it. So now I own two copies. Oh, but the last one is supposed to be really good. Unburying Carol. Carol Evers is a woman with a dark secret. She has died many times, but her many deaths are not final. They are comas, a waking slumber, indistinguishable from death, each lasting days. Only two people know of Carol's eerie condition. One is her husband, Dwight, who married Carol for her fortune, and when she laps into another coma, plots to seize it by proclaiming her dead and quickly burying her alive. The other is her lost love, the infamous outlaw, James Moxie. When words of Carol's dreadful fate reaches him, Moxie rides the trail again to save his beloved from an early unnatural grave. And all the while, awake and aware, Carol fights to free herself from the crippling darkness that binds her, summoning her own fierce will to survive. As the players in this drama of life and death fight to decide her fate, Carol must in the end battle to save herself haunting story of a woman literally bringing herself back from the dead unburied carol is a twisted take on sleeping beauty fairy tale that will stay with you long after you've turned the page that sounds awesome Ooh, and it marries two of my favorite things in life spooky and fairy tales so oh and look at this beautiful cover it's so orange and black like halloween it's lovely Also by Josh Mallerman, Bird Box, which is something I want to buy. Goblin. Oh, I love goblins. I wonder what that's about. It's awesome. Ooh, I'm going to read it now. It smells good, too. It smells so nice and new. I like the, the pages. Ooh. I really want to read this. It smells all of it. Oh, but we have another box. We have May. Wonderful job for April. And now we have May. I did take a peek. That's how I know it's so good. Look at those. Ooh. Bookmark first. May 2018. Who made this bloody fucking mess? It wasn't me. Cute. I said <laughs> there's too much good stuff in here so I'm taking my time welcome to the drive-in we get a nice little cup these are like the Mardi Gras cups that we we use enter at your own risk so I am not familiar with this book Joe Lansdale stadium cup is based on the drive-in trust me if you haven't read this book yet you and you love weird gory horror which i do then it is the book you are looking for 
Next we have the pin. It says nothing. But it looks like Christine. It looks like it'd be from Christine. I've never heard of a book called Nothing before. But I do like the pin. That's pretty badass. Doesn't say. Hmm. Okay, I like it though. I do, I do, I do, I do. All right, then we have, looks like a mirror. Mirror is based on the Traveling Vampire Show. It says, welcome to the Traveling Vampire Show. And it is a little mirror. Pretty in my purse. And we have a, a t-shirt. And it's black. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sending black t-shirts. This is awesome. Look at it. The wearable for the month got changed a few times. There were a few licensing rights issues, but we think you still ended up with a pretty badass shirt based on Robic, my man's Vathurst. Again, not familiar, so I'm going to have to check it out. But it's black, and it's got a vampire on it, so, oh my god, totally going to wear that all the time. That's an easy one. All right, so now we're down to our books, as well as these postcards, which I freaking love. Oh my gosh, because they have um, quotes on the front. We got three of them. They have quotes on the front from Lestat the Lion Court. This one says, in fiction, if nowhere else, I must have a little meaning, a little coherence, or I will go mad. And then we got two more. Those are awesome. I love that. Too cool. Evil is a point of view. God kills, and so shall we. Indiscriminately. I feel like I remember him saying that. So, of course, I'm a huge Anne Rice fan. Awesome color. Very vintage. So we have another Apex magazine and set up the same way like a magazine. Interesting. Apexmagazine.com. Looks like it's a real magazine in book form. Now I'm really gonna have to read it. Looks like science fiction. Very science fiction-y. And these books, oh my gosh, they look killer. New release, Eternal Frankenstein, a book full of insane short stories loosely based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, edited by Ross E. Lockhart. How awesome does that look? Who doesn't love some Frankenstein? That is so cool. Six tales of terror and wonder. In the back it says, 200 years ago, a young woman stayed in a chalet in Switzerland. After an evening of ghost stories shared with friends and lovers, had a frightening dream. The dream came the seed that inspired Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein. Or the modern Prometheus, a tale of galvanism, philosophy, and the reanimated dead. Today, Frankenstein has become a modern myth without rival, influencing countless words of fiction, music, and film. We all know Frankenstein, but how much do we really know about Frankenstein? This looks so cool. That's awesome. And then finally, we have Previous Release Haven by Tom Deedy. When we read this, we were blown away. Haven hasn't received nearly as much publicity as it deserves. It's one of our favorites of the year, and there has been some heavy hitters this year so far. Move it to the top of your TBR. I might have to do that. It's blurbed on the front, a big, generous Stephen King-like small town boys versus monster epic. Ah, that sounds awesome. Ooh, in 1961, the small town of Haven thought they'd gotten rid of their monster after a series of child killings. Paul Graymore was caught carrying a wounded girl, his face disfigured from a childhood accident. 
seemed to confirm he was the monster, monster the community hoped to banish. With Paul in prison, the killing stopped. For 17 years, Haven was peaceful again, but Paul served his time and has now returned to Haven, the town where he grew up, and the scene of his alleged crimes. Paul insists he didn't commit those crimes, and as several townspeople believe him, including the local priest, a young boy named Denny, and his best friend Billy. Trouble is, now that Paul is back home, the bizarre killings have started again, and the patterns match the details from Haven's past. If Paul isn't the killer, who is, or what is? An unlikely band of adventurers attempts to uncover the truth, delving into long hidden tunnels that might actually be inhabited by a strange predatory creature. Haven is a compelling horror epic in the spirit of It or Summer of Night and a stunning debut novel from a gifted author who knows what the darkest horrors lurk inside human beings, even when there is a monster on the loose. That looks too good. So good. A Bram Stoker award winner. Awesome. This looks killer. Killer! Oh man, I'm so excited to get started. So we got a lot of stuff out of out of this box too. We got the two books, the magazine, a cup, our postcards, our bookmark, the pen, the mirror. And a freaking t-shirt. I don't know how you guys are still in business. I feel like everything you send is way more than what I pay you for. So, killer job. You guys are the bomb. Can't wait to read these. Love you, Nocturnal Readers Box. Apron. Can't wait to see what happens in June. Thank you so much for sticking around. And, man, if you haven't got you one of these yet, you need to. Where else can you get awesome stuff like this? Right? Delivered to your door. They're so good at picking stuff. And the exposure they give you to these crazy amazing books is just beyond belief. So, diehard fan. You guys are wonderful. Great job. Thank you so much.